first, a word about the Field and Garden podcast. The Field and Garden podcast is a part of the Gardener's Workshop. The Gardener's Workshop has been telling the stories and how-tos of growing, selling, and helping others to pursue their flower-growing dreams for over 25 years. What began as one gardening enthusiast sharing her passion has grown into so much more. Over at thegardenersworkshop.com, find in print with our blogs and books and through our podcasts and videos and courses, and we have a shop full of the same tools, seeds, and supplies that you hear mentioned on our podcast. You can connect with all of these resources over at thegardenersworkshop.com. I hope you'll take some time to explore all we have for you. Welcome to the Field and Garden Podcast. Hey friends, welcome back to another Field and Garden episode. It is your host and friend, Lisa Mason Ziegler, and thanks for dropping in. So friends, this is broadcasting right after Thanksgiving, and I just have a lot of things I want to say. And I'm hoping that it might help you have a little bit of some epiphanies as has happened for me and I'm going to talk about here in in the last few weeks. So before we dive into the juiciness of today, let's first take a little walk around the block if you're new here. So this podcast is brought to you by thegardenersworkshop.com which is my company that I began back in 1998 as a little flower farmer launching what I I had no idea where it was going to go, y'all. I started a little garden in my backyard, um, hit success, and here we are 25 years later. And you can learn all of the different aspects of my business over at thegardenersworkshop.com from an online garden shop that is fully stocked with the same tools, seeds, and supplies, plus my books. And by the way, my new book, The Cut Flower Handbook, is coming out in February of 2024. And if you're listening to this um, in real time, the book is available currently on pre-order. Well, I'll say a limited number of copies are. And then the book will be available in February. And I could not be happier, prouder, more humbled, more overwhelmed with your response. So that's what you'll find in our online garden shop. But friends, we have tons of resources over there, including lots of blogs, um, how-to videos, as well as you can connect with our sister podcast, Seed Talk, as well as we have a fully stocked online course library offering. And you'll find all that over at thegardenersworkshop.com. And y'all, I wish you could see, I have like all these papers in my lap of all these notes of kind of how this actually started, (laughs) this whole podcast developing here. Um, So first, I want to just bring you guys up to date. So the book is done, obviously, right? Well, you know, a book is never really done. You um, constantly want to bring it in front of people, but the work behind the scenes is actually done. It's at the printer, it's being printed, and what that's allowed me to do is to finally take a breath. And I've taken a breath, and I've looked back over the last year and a half to two years and see just how consumed with that book I was and just how much work it was. And then I'm just so pleased with the way it all turned out. But what kind of happened to me about four or five weeks ago when all that kind of happened, it's like, okay, this is it. The final edits were done. You know, take it away, publisher. You know, it'll come back to me and a a box will show up at my house in several weeks with the copy of the book, you know. Um, And so that allowed me to really take a look at my business and my business life. And, um, you know, you all know, I mean, I adore what I do. Some people, 
um, see it as a problem. Um, they, they think that I work all the time, but I really don't actually, y'all. That's all an illusion. But I'm driven because I absolutely love growing flowers. I love teaching other people how to do it. Whether you are a home gardener wanting to have a little patch in your backyard that you walk out and cut for your table to share for church flowers, whatever. But I'm also just so um, empowered from the people that want to start their own cut flower business and watching these journeys. And that's what fuels my fire. So these last, this last year and a half, this wake up time that I've had, I've just looked back and seen how much I missed all of that. Um, because I wasn't able to really do that at the level that I had become doing it. I had started doing that, right? And that was what was behind. Um, so it's already passed now, but we did my first in-person workshop on November 18th, the first one in like five years. And that was dreamed up, done, and sold in like two weeks, uh, maybe three weeks. And it was because I all of a sudden realized one of the things that fuels me was in person, talking, interacting with people. And so that just happened this past weekend, and I was not disappointed. I mean, being with these ambitious, dreaming, doing um Flower farmers was just phenomenal. Those that are just embarking, some that were doing it, and others that have been doing it. And it just revved my engine, y'all. And it just connects me to what people want and what they need. And then that just led me down um, what's going to be happening for 2024. Just me getting back in the ditch of um, figuring out how I can help people do the best um, or provide the tools that they need to actually do the best. And I will tell you that um, what I feel like now, this is, you know, this will be an image. We'll have, I'm sure somebody will draw this and send it to me. I feel like for the last two years, I've been running around with my hair on fire. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like writing a book, growing the flowers, pictures, writing, edits, worrying about is that flower going to bloom, and then managing the overall business. And of course, none of that would have been possible without the Gardener's Workshop team. I mean, that's why I was able to step away from so many aspects of our business, from our online courses, our fulfillment center, production. Um, I mean, there's just so many pieces. And all those pieces, y'all, are what just brings so much satisfaction out of this business that we've created, right? So there's an image you can think of as me running around with my hair on fire. Well, the fire's out now, y'all. I am calming down and getting back to work. Um, And so we every year typically have two events a year. Some years we, you know, during the pandemic, we didn't get to do this, but we have an open farm, um, even with my shrunk down size of a garden. Um, we do that in the middle of the summer, typically. And if the way you learn about all this stuff, y'all, is to get on our newsletter, um, our farm news list. Um, so we do something in the middle of the summer where people can come to the farm. And then in December, we've always had a holiday open warehouse. Um, I mean, we've done that literally started before we started having open farms. Um, And that's kind of really grown into what we're calling um, a gratitude event because it's really about, especially for the locals. And when I say local, I mean, what is local? We thought only local people would come to the workshop on this past Saturday. Y'all, we had people from Florida, Ohio, Indiana, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Maryland. Anyway, so what is local in this day and age? But This gratitude event is um, 
usually one of the first weekends in December. It's just on a Saturday. And we are really taking the whole gratitude. It's really becoming about thanking our customers for for giving us feedback, for being our customers, for being our followers, for being our students. Um, And it'll be a time of, you know, spending time together because now in this new warehouse, we have space, y'all. We have the space to have people and to mingle. And it's like, as I mentioned to our team, it's like going from a small chopped up bungalow to a big open concept home. And that's exactly what happened. We experienced it with our in-person workshop. It was just such a great and easy mingling time. And so, you know, if you're in our neck of the woods, get on the newsletter so you can learn more about the gratitude event, um, which is in December. And of course, it's a great time, you know, to pick up Christmas shopping stuff, right? And just stocking up for your own, gearing up for, because you know, y'all, as soon as Christmas pass, we are head first into seed starting for very early spring plantings of cool flowers, but we'll talk about that another day. So a couple of um, things that have just really helped me um, to, that's kind of bringing me around the block to circling back to what I should do. So I heard this in a different context, um, but I want to tell y'all that listening to folks talk on this in person made me realize how much it helps for people to embrace and have a glimpse into what I call the flower farm in life. Um, the lifestyle. Um, I used to, I often say also that living the organic lifestyle, I mean, when I say that, I mean by living, going organic, meaning not using pesticides and herbicides and things, not even organic products for us, um, is not one thing you do. It's a way you live with your garden. Well, I feel that very same way about flower farming and the flower farming life. And I heard this analogy the other day, and I thought that is exactly what happens, I think, for so many people that want to become a flower farmer. They kind of start, and then they get discouraged and go about their business. So this guy was telling the story of Christopher Columbus and how he um, discovered a new continent, right? He discovered America, right? Um, But something I had never, ever thought of until I heard this was all Christopher ever saw was the coastline, he never ventured in, right? I mean, I'm sure if he did, somebody's going to let me know that. But um, he literally never saw Yellowstone. He never saw the Grand Canyon. He never saw the, you know, the desert. He never saw the the mountains. The, You know what I mean? It's like the coast is wonderful, y'all. But he went back um, and was telling everybody of how amazing what he saw, but literally what he saw was the tip of the iceberg, right? Think about that for just a few minutes. Think about being Christopher Columbus and not having a glimmer or an opportunity or an idea. He had no understanding of what he really had discovered, right? He went back home and said, you will not believe what I have found, (laughs) right? But we know that he just really, really had absolutely no clue of what he had discovered. He never got into it. He never started doing it. You know, he never ventured in. Um, And friends, that is exactly what it's like for so many people that embark on flower farming. They see the coastline, <clears throat> which is the flowers, right? And they may venture in a little bit, but they get so discouraged so fast that they never get into it. You know, 
Um, I am so grateful that I'm a little bit of a crazy, ambitious person to keep pushing, to keep, um, just to keep trying something even when I fail, fail and fail and fail and fail and fail, then win. Then you win big, then you fail and fail and fail and fail, then you win. That's the way that this ball rolls, you know? Um, So when you kind of get a little unscrewed (laughs) or you're embarking on this, when you see um, whether it's whoever you're watching on social media, um, you know, I want you to take a step back. And first off, remember that you're supposed to have failures every single day. You will have a win. And I have something to say about that in just a minute. Um, You will ultimately have a win. But while you're looking through social media, I want you to think about something that helps me a whole bunch. Instead of or in place of you comparing what you're doing with other people, Compare what you're doing today to what you were doing last year, maybe last week, maybe five years ago, and see how far you've come. It's absolutely amazing, y'all. It's absolutely amazing. And, you know, just think of what Christopher Columbus thought And what the reality was of the opportunities of the things he, that were just over that mountain and he never made it to see that, right? So, you know, one of the um, things that I want to really drive home as we're heading into winter, which is, you know, for us here on my farm during all those high production years, when we were in harvest season, all I heard was, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> you know, it's like I was so consumed. I heard nothing, saw nothing except for cutting, selling, planting, and starting flowers during the harvest season because everything revolved around that, right? You got one opportunity and it was now. So heading into winter, was a time of first catching your breath, relaxing. I know I've said before that for me, December as a farmer, um, December was the month we took off. Um, There still was tons of things that could be done from seed starting to garden work potentially, but we, I took the month of December off for sanity peace of mind, my family. Of course, we celebrate the holidays. That was just a great time to know, okay, when January 1st comes, back at it again, right? So heading into winter is the time for if you don't have structure, um, now's the time to actually start practicing, y'all. Um, Because there's two outcomes when you start a flower farming business. One, it's eventually going to work because you're going to keep getting up and doing it day after day, day after day. The boring stuff, the stuff that you think is not important, typically is the most important things. So that's number one. Eventually, it's going to work. Or there's number two. You give up before it works. That's what I see happen. 95. Well, that's in every business, not just flower farming. Um, So, you know, y'all, I understand how difficult it is to get up and face issues, but that's what being in business is all about. And I think you just hearing somebody say, and the eye opener for me, you know, I'm married, um, Steve, married to a man that comes from a long line of entrepreneur, business-owning people. My husband and his family, his siblings, own a business together that with their dad started. And it's very successful. Um, Listening, I can still remember him getting a call. It was his sister. um, And they were facing an issue. Um, And when he got off the phone, I sat there and stared at him. He said, what? What's the matter? I said, 
I cannot believe that after 50 years in business, you still face that problem. It made me, it elevated me so much, y'all. It's like, even with great success, 25 employees, you know, I mean, just doing it and doing it well, that they still face that problem. And that just liberated me. That just totally liberated me. And so that brings me to what, um, you know, I'm going to, I'll preface this. I'm not telling you what I'm getting ready to tell you because I want to sell you courses. I made you courses because that's what's needed to move forward. You know, everything that we offer and do is based on what I've done and some of my peers have done, you know, Dave Dowling and Stephen Gretel Adams and Amelia Ilo and Ellen Frost and Jenny Love and Val Shermer, you know, I'm just trying to think, am I forgetting anybody? (laughs) All of those people are my peers um, that are flower farming. And we didn't think, oh, wow, let's make up courses and and figure out how to sell them, right? No, these are based on us being lecturers and teachers um, and doing it. So here is my take on um, the most valuable thing that you can do to start to grow, and to really scale and expand your flower farming business is to network with those those people that are ahead of you, y'all, ahead of you. Not people that are walking potentially in the very same path or most often those behind you. I'm not saying you don't need to help those people. I'm saying if you want to focus on building your business, starting your business, scaling your business, expanding your business, you have got to connect yourself with those people that are ahead of you so that they can help you with things like, look out for that fallen board. Don't step in that mud puddle. No, don't grow that. It There's a better one. Or did you know if you grow that, this is going to be a problem that you're going to have to face. Friends, because the number one, so here is what is so hard for me. It's not hard for me today. That's why it's so easy for me to embrace equipment, technology, um, courses. um, You know, and I mean, I'm still, I take courses all the time, business courses, farming. I mean, I do, I do the same thing I'm advocating that you should do. The highest cost that you have to pay down to succeed is what I call the ignorance tax. Y'all have heard me say this before. You do not know what you do not know. And the cost of the ignorance tax is, so let's, is that is how much you're not making that you potentially could make. So let's just say you're starting out, it's your first year, and you're saying, all right, I'm setting my goal at $50,000. That's what I want to create an income. Every year that you don't make that $50,000, it's costing you $50,000 to not do it. <laughs> do you see what I mean? And it's it's so easy to think, should I or shouldn't I? I mean, I am so quick to embrace when the team comes to me and says, hey, there's this new software or there's something. It's like, well, let's do it. If we don't do it, we'll never know. We'll never reach that potential, right? And friends, remember, every day is full of failures. If you're not failing, you do not do You do not know what you're actually missing. So friends, as we're heading into winter, um, I will hope you'll remind yourself that if you aren't structured, structure no matter what kind of business you're in, you got to have it. What you do with your days, how much time is wasted every day? A lot of time. Um, I'm often, I actually just posted recently a reel of, in fast forward of me pushing a mower and it's like, you know, cartoonish, right? Um, but that's how people see me. But in fact, I don't work that fast, but 
but I'm very efficient because I've, I ignore the time sucks in my life, do what I think is important and focus on those things and just move on. I don't give a second thought to something that I've screwed up, messed up. I just move on and try to do it better next time. And as we go into winter, this is the opportunity of a lifetime to get your peas in a row, to get educated, to pay down your 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 ta- your ignorance tax. That's the way that you can think about that. And I still today, I mean, when I oftentimes when I speak with my good friend Dave Downing, I always learn something from Dave. We have been together for almost 20 years. <laughs> You know, and particularly in business, I'm constantly, constantly learning, not to mention that stuff is changing all the time, right? So friends, we, um, as we're heading in to this winter time, how can you make the best use out of your time? Because while some people think, oh, the winter is when flower farmers take it off, not at all. That's when all of the planning, all the strategy, all the preparation so that you can have the best harvest season ever um, can happen if you actually um, embrace it. It's just so easy to fall in. Y'all, I'm looking for a note that I wrote here to myself. And, you know, I'm all about the paper, y'all. Um, and you have to find your way. If you're not a paper person, whatever way works for you is what works. So, friends, I'm going to wrap this up. Just remember the ignorance tax, right? And the inefficiency tax. Um, there are opportunities Um to improve yourself, your business, and now's the time to actually strike. So over at thegardenersworkshop.com, you will find um, the Flower Farming series of online courses, and they are now available year-round. We don't have open and closing enrollment anymore because people just want it when they want it, right? But what that means is that they are available to you. And while they are jam-packed, you can go to each, you can go to thegardenersworkshop.com, go to online courses and find our flower schools and go and read. The syllabus is right there. You can see what's included with each course. But let me tell you what I see is a key piece of value, and that is the private communities. That's where you are going to network with people that are ahead of you. And people that are alongside you have the same skin in the game. Um, You know, and I'll say this and then we're going to wrap. Um, I often see um, on social media, particularly in groups that are not really private, you know, they're not truly controlled with a limited focused people, um, people asking questions that are being answered by people that have never done it, or you have no idea if they've done it or if they've been successful. And, um, you know, that it's just a very, very different environment, friends. Um, When you're in a closed community with people that are ahead of you, um, of course, your instructors swim in and out of there, but also even if it's someone that's still on the journey, that is on, we're all on the journey, right? That's on the journey alongside you. They have a different perspective um, when you are with people that have the same goal in mind as building a successful business and scaling, starting, and expanding their, their business. And so I invite you to check out Flower Farming School Online. We have the basics, which is my course. We have Dave Dowling's course on bulbs, perennials, and woodies, which expands your offering. Once you have customers lined up and you just need to grow more stuff and you want my more diversity. And then we take you to the scaling expert level with Steve and Gretel Adams um, on growing cut flower crops in hoop and greenhouses, which is amazing. It includes all kinds of pest and disease stuff and soil management and planning and scheduling. And um, it just kind of takes you up the stairway. 
Um, and so I invite you to check those out and you can see everything on um, each individual page with their syllabus. And friends, just remember, Christopher Columbus had no idea. He never ventured in to all the beauties. Um, he, didn't, he, he thought he had found something great, and he did, but he never got to see the potential. And that's the way that I feel it is with so many flower farmers. We quit before we ever get there. So just remember, eventually it's going to work or you're going to give up before it does. And, you know, that's me. I just never gave up. I had bad days, y'all. Don't get that wrong. I had bad days, but I got up and just kept at it again. All right, friends, until we meet again, hope to see you inside school someday. Ciao. Did you know that the Gardener's Workshop offers cut flower seeds? Our hand-picked selection includes only the varieties we grow in our own fields and gardens, and each pack is printed with our exclusive growing tips and insights. So visit us at thegardenersworkshop.com today. The Gardener's Workshop, turning all thumbs green.